Good afternoon, Tribe and Bills fans, and welcome to another edition of Sports Talk with Rags here in Season 4, Episode 32. And today here we are honored to have Tribe alum and former NFL kicker Steve Christie with us. Steve, how you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me. Sure, no problem. Uh, appreciate your time. Let's uh let's start at the beginning. Uh when you were when you were growing up, uh let's see what what was it? Mainly uh mainly soccer that you played? I played a bunch of sports, but uh soccer was the one that took a lot of time and um you know as I, as I developed as I was a center back and as I I love the sport, um, but at the time in the early '80s, uh, and then in, then through high school into the into the mid uh, mid '80s, there, you know, there's an opportunity for everybody, I suppose, in every sport. But for me, it would have to take place in Europe to to get to the next level. And you know, I had a couple of um, uh, sniffs at going over to Europe, and it, and I was 16, and my dad was uh, uh, as a former Ford executive. He's pretty heady guy. And he said, look, you know, you have to go over there. You have to get used to European football and, and, uh, and still continue your education over there. It's going to be really hard. Why don't you just, you know, stay put in Canada. And, uh, as soon as that, as soon as that decision was sort of made, uh, I started kicking footballs and, and punting. And, and next thing you know, our, our gym coach, uh, uh, came up to me one day and, and, uh, Tommy Johnson and basically said, look, we don't have anyone at school that can, that can kick. We have a punter, uh, but could you place kick for us? So that was my, uh, uh, grade 12. And now back then we had grade 13 as well. So my senior year of high school, I kicked and punted little did I know it would, you know, take me down South to Williamsburg, Virginia. Right now with, now I did have coach, uh, Albert on, uh, on a previous episode, but was there other colleges that you were looking at or was it pretty much uh, an opportunity to go and be part of uh, William and Mary? There were, a, there were a handful of soccer scholarships there and a couple of uh, half scholarship from, from bigger schools. And um, well, I'll just add this on a side note. Cause it's kind of funny. Right. Uh, about three months after I signed my letter of intent with coach Laycock, yeah. This guy with a really hard Southern accent calls up to Ontario, Oakville, Ontario, right. and calls the coaching office, which is basically all the gym coaches sitting around in a room, <laughs> right. and it's Bobby Biden. Oh, wow. From Florida State, and they right. had, they've had they had notorious bad luck, uh, especially when it came down to bowl games with their kickers. Right. And I guess Bobby, in his accent, was asking if they still had a kicker up there. Right. Well, my coaches really didn't understand what he was saying. And, uh, you know, amidst the laughter amongst themselves, you know, it's kind of like, really, Bobby Bowden? Really? And so they're laughing for two reasons. The first one was they really didn't understand him. And secondly, right. you're only three months too late. Now, right. You really missed the boat on the whole kicking thing. And uh, I think Florida State, they've improved their kicking game since then. But right. back then, I was signed and delivered. I was coming to William & Mary. So. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is, you know, tribe football. I mean, coach Laycock, I mean, uh, what, a what a great, uh, leader there to, uh, you know, just be big man on campus, not, not go anywhere, just lead tribe football and what, um, you know, not only to enter the workforce after playing for them, but, you know, look who's uh, gone on to the pros and uh, and even coaching uh, today that's from William & Mary. Yeah, I mean, it was a risk. Uh, again, really a kind of a raw specialist, you know, just pure soccer. Uh, I mean, I didn't even, I don't even take steps when I line up for my field goals. And, and uh, when I, I spent two years in Tampa and then signed with the Bills. And Bill Polian was out there with Marv Levy at minicamp. And it was Scott Norwood and I going head to head. That was bizarre right. itself because <laughs> everybody loves Scott. I still love Scott now. Like we're friends right. now. But it was head to head back then. And I remember Polian looking at Marv and he said, what's he doing? He doesn't even take any steps. He just lines up and he hits the ball. And I said, I'm a pure soccer player. This is what I've done. Like right. you signed me, but you didn't watch film? Right. Okay. So I guess that's no lie, but still, it was, it was kind of funny. But um, yeah, you know, Coach Laycock, he called me, or Russ Huseman, actually, oddly enough, the head coach of Richmond, 
was the one who called my dad. And that was another situation where another Southern accent going up to Canada and another, everyone's shaking their head going, hold on one second. Could you slow down one second? Did you see <laughs> William and Mary? So I guess they had a guy lined up to kick and punt and uh, he decided to go elsewhere. And so, uh, you know, having traveled down to Williamsburg to check things out, oddly enough, it wasn't my first time there. My, my grade eight class went down for the, you know, the, the old DC no trip, trip. Yeah. Day in Williamsburg, right? And he kind of waved at the Wren building saying, oh, that's a college of William Mary. Well, we don't know anything about it. And then, uh, then I come back and, and sign. And uh, I mean, I actually talked to coach London because uh, about this, because coach Laycock gave me a shot as a, as a freshman to kick and punt. And it was a risk. It was a risk. And uh, you know, we all come in, into those situations and, and the tribe may be in a similar situation coming in the next season. I said, you know what, if you love these guys coming in, let them have a shot because Laycock gave me a shot and it worked out. All right. Yes. And looking at, um, you know, so at the time, William and Mary was one double a independent at the time, but you had 21 field goals in one season. And since you kicked and punt, you know, top 10 in punting and 57 career field goals there, your time there at Zabel stadium. Yeah, it was, it was really special. And I, you know, I do a lot of coaching down here. I do individual lessons uh, for guys down here. And, you know, I always tell everybody my first punt at William Mary, you know, cause they say, Oh yeah, your career in the NFL and all that. I said, well, hold on. You need to remember something. So, we grew up, we're playing Colgate at home yeah. and, uh, uh, the snap comes back, goes through my hands, hits my helmet, pops up in the air. And as it's up in the air, the end from Colgate, I think you already had the, the right side of my Jersey. So uh -huh. I spun around, hit it with my left foot. Thank God I was a soccer player. Right. 11 yards was my first college effort. So my first punt was 11 yards. So I tell all my guys, Hey man, it only gets better, but it's what you do you know, after you have to be resilient. And when the chips are down, you know, what are you made of? Right. Yeah. And I came off the sideline and coach like car grabbed and he just says, <laughs> calm down. It's right. okay. Calm down. He was right. But I was so nervous. I mean, I went from playing max in front of 200 people to 12,000. So yeah, I was, I was pretty nervous. Yeah. And the thing is, is kicking and punting. I mean, there with being the punter, you know, you got the job of, flipping the field for your defense, you know, and one of the stats is, you know, how many punts you can, um, you can get inside the 20, you know, to uh, affect the field position. And then your, and, and then your defense can go and, um, you know, so uh, definitely some uh, critical um, expertise there with uh, punting. Well, it's, it's funny because as a place kicker, the offensive coordinator likes you because of your kickoffs and, and, right. uh, and getting points. Right. And your defensive coordinator should like you for good kickoffs and good punting. So in my case, he's either good or bad. Right. So the pressure was on. I got two guys, three guys, including Coach Laycock, to answer to. But you know what? I, I really love my experience there and, and uh, my teammates. And uh, I was a Lambda Chi off of there. My, my brothers, it was, uh, man, I'll tell you, even to this day, I tell guys, you know, like I said, I, I coach a bunch of guys down here and I said, you know what, don't necessarily look at these huge schools. Sometimes you're better off going to a smaller school like I did and with an opportunity to play right away. And, uh, in that program though, again, I was really lucky to get there and, and have the opportunity to get out there and do it. Right. And then and then field goal kicking. I mean, you talk about, uh, you know, kickoffs and then and then get points. And it's pretty much, you know, as the offense is is going down, you know, you're you're um, standing there on the sidelines, you know, being by yourself and, you know, maybe talking to the special teams coach, but get warmed up with kicking the ball you know, in the net and the game can come down to your kick. Yeah. Or, whereas in the case of being on the sidelines in Buffalo in November and December, I really wasn't kicking in the net a whole lot. I was hogging the heater right. um, waiting to go in just to see if I could, you know, even feel my leg. And there were games where, you know, you couldn't feel anything. 
you know, it was muscle, muscle memory and, you know, look at the ball and swing, you know, it's, uh, it's like hitting a, a golf ball without warming up, but, uh, yeah, you got used to that too. And I think, you know, and coach Laycock really pushed me in practice and, and uh, expected a lot out of me because, uh, I, I would have to think that deep down inside, you know, I would have a shot of, of playing after college. And so he pushed me and I think, you know, he did the right thing. And, and, um, uh, I think sometimes now with my guys, I'm not hard enough. Uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, maybe too much of a friend to some of my guys, but there will be a point where I have to put on the laycock and get get after some of these boys down here. Right. Yeah, and I mean, with your time as a player there, at William and Barry. I mean, what was it like when they called you back in 2001? And with your time uh, kicking and punting you know, being one of the football alums that get recognized into the Tribe Hall of Fame. Well, that was great. And uh, Coach Laycock was there. Coach Levy came. That was that was great. Uh, my uncle, bunch of uncles and aunts and relatives from all over the place. Bills fans were – we had pretty good numbers from Buffalo there, and uh, it was really special. Um, and, again, another honor to be uh, in the Tribe Hall of Fame and with so many other great, great athletes. Right. And after your time – as a student athlete at William and Mary, I mean, was, was coach Laycock or some of the, you know, scouts, you know, giving you possibilities of playing in the NFL, but what was it, what was it like here, there in the, um, there in the early nineties to, you know, get seen to play at the next level? Well, it was interesting. We had, uh, I, I would think we had about five different teams come in and, and work me out right at the old uh, Zabel Carry Field, whatever it was back then. Right. And uh, in fact, one team, the Cowboys, said that I wasn't good enough. And uh, I think it was after I was drafted by Edmonton up in Canada, which is, of course, is for Canadian citizens only. I'm now, I'm now dual. I'm American as well now. But okay, nice, awesome. Never leaving uh, the states. Why would I, you know? I should, probably should. Um, so that's what I did during COVID. One of the things I did during COVID was get my citizenship here. But um, yeah, we had a bunch of, uh, you know, teams come in and work me out. And, and Cowboys basically told everybody, uh, Matt Kelsham, my special teams coach, saying, well, you know what? Steve should probably go back to Canada. He's not good enough for the NFL. So I think they kind of helped me in a way. Right. Uh, because... Yeah, you know, sometimes uh, somebody lights a fire under you, and and for whatever reason, uh, either you react or you fold up. And you know, I, I got after it after that. And then uh, that that year, uh, the Buccaneers played the Cowboys. I think second or third game in, and I mentioned that in the news. Right. Uh, so that particular coach, which will go unnamed, uh, right. went out before pregame, and you know, all the big handshakes, and we're pals. I'm like, yeah, right, buddy. You're right. <laughs> You're right. I'm not good enough to make it, but I'm playing you today. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, you know, like Chris Berman, you know, uh, hey, the big sombrero, you know, they're in uh, they're in Tampa. But uh, after two seasons, two seasons there with the Bucks, I mean, um, you know, did you play the free agent market or did your agent have this lead? with with the bills because uh boy what a what a great uh tenure that you had with the buffalo bills yeah again i was lucky to get up there the bucks at the time were in turmoil uh it would have been my third head coach in three years uh coaches and players in and out the door in and out the door it wasn't stable um not that i didn't love playing in tampa uh, the old sombrero was a great place to kick really was nice and and the other story i got to tell you is when uh, I was in camp with the Bucks my first year, my rookie year, and mm -hmm. they had two punters in there, uh, Mark Royals and Chris Moore, who both ended up punting for 15 years. They were head to head. And uh, we knew that was going to be a tight deal. That was nobody really knew who was going to make it out of the pair of them because they were both so good. Right. Uh, but one day they said, hey, Steve, we know you punted in college. Could you punt with these guys? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny because they're all six, five, six, six. I'm <laughs> six, one and skinny. Right. And uh, so we all punted. My average was pretty close to theirs, but their hang time was a full second better. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew this is the difference between, you know, punting in college, one double A to the pros. These guys were knocking the clouds down and I'm line driving for what would be for sure a lot of return yardage. So 
I was happy being the disaster punter, but it also helped me concentrate on my kicking. So it worked out well that way. Right. Yes. And, uh, you know, um, going not only from the Bucks, I mean, uh, you know, with being from a military family, we lived in Tampa in the mid 80s. And, you know, they it was almost like they were paying us to come to the games, you know, but but you leave you leave Tampa and not only uh, personally, you had great career there with the Bills, but it was also the time that the that the Bills were, you know, on the map there, not only in the AFC East, but it but fighting for AFC titles. Yeah, that uh, the first Super, I was in two Super Bowls, both both against uh, both against Dallas, and of course we know how they ended up. But uh, that first one at the Rose Bowl, I may have been nervous at William and Mary for my first game against Colgate, but going against the Cowboys at the Rose Bowl was that was a whole different deal. But you know that's also the, they always tell you like once you get out there and you know kick a ball or throw it or catch it or make that first hit, you, you know you're back into your usual pro mode, you know, but. Until I got out there, man, I'm telling you, the, the butterflies were crazy. But, you know, what a great opportunity. What a, and I'm fortunate, again, to go from a team that was 3-13 and 13 to going to the Super Bowl. I mean, that was a big jump. That was a big jump. But I was close to home, close to my, my buddies in high school. So that was also – that was pretty cool to get up there. Yes, and we also have to uh, make note here of uh, being part of one of the best – comebacks there in the playoffs there against there against the Oilers and you know with uh reading you know some uh highlights here of your career before this uh before this episode I mean not only kicking an onside and the Bills getting it but also also receiving it here with uh part of that comeback there what a what a game to be a part of and I still and I still teach it uh, surprise middle on side because you never know when you're going to need it. Um, now, Mark Maddox and Mark Pike were the two guys that really were instrumental in the recovery. So they basically make a beeline, you know, and I shark tail behind them and, and yeah. scoop up the ball, which is exactly what happened. And then but once I did get the ball, Steve Tasker ran over, literally pulled me out of the pile. He goes, get out of there. They're going to kill you. And he was right. <laughs> the playoffs, man, Cheap shot on the kicker. Why not? So. <laughs> He saved me. I got out of there. Then I tossed the ball to uh, to uh, Dave Hojanowski, our equipment guy, and I said, hold this. You never know. Right. Yeah. Man. Yes. And then also with uh, getting the uh, – kicking the game winner, you know, uh, even also uh, read that uh, – what, your uh, shoe went to uh, – shoe went to Canton here with uh, – about that game. So we knew that it was the old school AstroTurf back then, basically carpet on cement. And we knew it was probably going to be frozen. So I had, to, I was okay with my plant foot, but I had, I had issues with my kicking foot. So uh, I found an old shoe in the back of the shed. I was a Nike guy and I found an old shoe in the back of the shed there, literally like covered in dirt and mold, whatever. I cleaned her up and that's what you see in the Hall of Fame. Nice. So it worked for basically one game because it was like frozen and it was just one of those old shoes that, hey, this thing might work. Um, but, yeah, the other story was that when we kicked we kicked the field goal at the end there, the net crew didn't have enough time to get the net up. So the ball went straight into the stands and somebody caught it. And right. that, was, that was kind of the joke the next day, like, well, who's got the ball? Who's got the ball? And somebody from PR comes down and says, Steve, uh, we found the ball. And he wants to know if you want to buy it for 10, 10 grand. I said, no, tell him to keep it, get stuffed. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, is I definitely remember that game, but then, but then also, uh, you know, they're in the AFC championship game. I mean, uh, everybody likes uh, touchdowns and likes offense, but, you know, five field goals in any game, but, five field goals there in a AFC championship game. He definitely had a big piece in um, the Bills taking down the Dolphins. Well, you know, with that kind of offense, with Jim Kelly's K gun and all the weapons that we had, I mean, a lot of them are in the Hall of Fame. So, I mean, we know, you know Thurman and well, offensively Andre and Lofton. We had so many weapons. But, you know, that, you know, credit to Miami's defense too. They, you know, 
we sputtered a little bit, but it's, it's nice to be needed and it's nice to count it, you know, nice to get in there and get some work in and, you know, help the club. Right. And the, another connection here with being tied to William and Mary, I mean, not only you played for Jimmy Laycock, but then at the bills, you got to play uh, with Marv Levy, you know, and just his, uh, his bio, you know, you definitely at the college and the, and the pro level playing for two icons. Well, Mark, I'm going to add this too. Uh, my rookie year, I got to play with uh, John Cannon, William and Mary. And then when I signed with Buffalo, Mark Kelso, William and Mary, nice. and we're frat brothers. So what are the odds of that? So <laughs> the three guys floating in the league at the time, I got to play with them. Unfortunately, I don't think Mark and John got to play, but I got to play with them. And that was, for me, that was really cool. And then, of course, now uh, McDermott and Brady, I mean, the list goes on and on. Now Buffalo's William Mary staff is growing. Uh, up there and i uh, i text sean occasionally when chips are up and chips are down uh that's kind of the, the guy i am on on that sort of thing i don't want to bug him but it is a hot pot up there i mean you're under the microscope buffalo during the football season is yes there's sabers a little bit going on on the side right. the bills are it that's it and <laughs> good or bad right uh but uh you know speaking of sean he's done a heck of a job up there uh he really has and uh yeah, it's not an easy gig. It's not easy up there at all. Right. And the thing is, is not only the regular season, but it seems like here in the last few years, you know, the early playoffs have come down to William & Mary alums battling it out, Steelers, Bills. And then in regular season, they're usually on prime time. And, you know, Jimmy Laycock down there in the pregame with Mike Tomlin and right. McDermott, you know, being two of the NFL head coaches. Yeah, and I think the Steelers will be a lot better this year, knowing what knowing what I see from Mike Tomlin. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, I think our biggest obstacle though is is Kansas City, as seems to be everyone's obstacle. But for us, we're in the position every we get to the position where, you know, during the playoffs, you know, we have the opportunity. We have the opportunity. We're close. The games are close, but. We just, I think for me, uh, that's that's the mountain to get over. Because if we can get past Kansas City, like bring on the NFC as far as I'm concerned. Right. Yes. And, uh, you know, there is that home field advantage here, especially what you guys experience, you know, there in the, um, you know, uh, your first couple years with the Bills. Nothing like playoff football there at uh, – at Bill Stadium. And, you know, it's we live in Lake Ranch, Florida, which is part of Bradenton, uh, south of Tampa. So, yeah, I go to a couple of Bucks games here and there, but there are Bill's backers, bars and, and groups everywhere down here, the booster clubs. I mean, they're just, they're all over the place. So it's not like, you know, we feel, we feel like we're almost there when we're not. And, uh, you know, everybody's just so great. You know, all the Bills fans, we come together. And, I mean, we're talking – I mean, we have a little group at uh, Lakewood National. I think it started at about 24 people. It's up to 64. Wow. So, you know, so if we're over at Lakewood National, they have a nice outdoor area, quite a resorty kind of a place with a big tiki bar. Well, we have a whole end now. So we are becoming quite resented by <laughs> – <laughs> all the clubs in the league like oh man we are sick and tired of these bills fans i'm like hey until we lose we're gonna be here but right. uh the support uh it's not just in orchard park it's not just in buffalo it's it's all over the place and uh you know down here you walk to the supermarket and someone's got a you know a bills lid on it's like go bills no matter where you are it's pretty cool right yes and then uh you know playing with the chargers playing with the giants but then uh before your professional days were done. I mean, you know, you did have that opportunity of playing in the playing in the CFL there with Toronto, right? Yes. Now there's another way, Mary Link. Michael Pinball Clemens was the coach. And that's the only reason that game happened. I was well retired two years out and we have the same agent, Gil Scott, in Toronto. And Gil goes, Hey, I got a call from Pinball. You want to play one game? Their kicker got a concussion. I'm like, ah. <laughs> I don't know. I seriously, I haven't hit a ball at like anyway. So it was at least we won. But uh, yeah, that was my last hurrah as a pro. But it was fun. It was fun to say that as a Canadian that I played one game in the CFL. 
Yes, and you did um, sign a one-day contract here to retire as a Bill, and you got honored by your college with inducted into William Mary Hall of Fame and being part of the Bills' 50th anniversary team here with the rich tradition of the franchise there around the American Football Conference. Yeah, again, you know, when when these these things sort of happen after you're done, it's it's nice to be remembered, really. I mean, it's uh you know, we're up, we're up, we're in the public uh, eye a good bit, uh, even though we're in Florida, we're up in Buffalo a lot. I'm a spokesperson for Lake Effect Furniture. Uh, I'm an artist and my wife, Kelly, and I are with LPT Realty down here in Florida. So we are busy. We're out there. But, you know, a lot of people don't know what I did in another life. And that's fine. I mean, that's kind of one reason why we live in Florida is because I don't need to hear about the bills every day. But I need to hear about the rumors, the good, the bad, the ugly, what glad says looking out her window i you know hey it's uh i like to hear my snippets and from people that i know hey what's going on but you know to be removed down here is nice knowing that yes there's a lot of bills people down here but whenever we go back home it is back home to buffalo or you know back home to oakville ontario it's it is pretty cool and then to go to a game and at this point to still have people recognize you is kind of neat right yes and i did i did see that uh you know, there was definitely a highlight here with uh, what just last year here when they uh, when they were hosting the Cowboys on a doubleheader game, you know, recognized as a uh, Bills legend there for that uh, there for that game. So, yeah, that was nice. But the funny thing is they want you to sing. They want you to do this whole hurrah, hurrah thing. And I told the girl um Brianna Rossi, who's who runs our alumni, I said, don't be mad. And my wife, Kelly, was with me and she started laughing because she knew it was coming. I'm not singing. I'm terrible. I won't I won't sing an anthem out of respect for the anthem and everyone else around me. So I changed the whole thing and just gave them a kind of a coaching pep talk. And I think it went over well, despite the fact that it wasn't what they wanted in pregame. But as long as I made it into that you have so many seconds to get your message out and i think i did all right but you know at the end of the day we won and and so i got a text from sean saying thanks for getting my guys going i'm like hey anytime yes yes and uh so after your playing days you did you did talk about what you've done away from the field but you've mentioned here with uh some of the guys that you've coached so have you have you coached uh special teams at the high school level or or do you or do you offer uh you know one-on-one um private lessons i do one-on-one private lessons i did volunteer at my my youngest daughter claire was at lake ranch high school uh a number of years ago uh she's turning 21 in a couple of weeks that's scary in itself to think of that but uh so i volunteered there for a while but primarily working with specialists and then helping the special teams coach with various aspects of what I could see anyway, what I could recognize. And I have to say this, Bruce DeHaven, our special teams coach in, in Buffalo, yes. uh, Chris Moore and I had to attend all the meetings, punt return, coverage, whatever, everything, kickoff return. I'm glad I did right. because now I can kind of see things from a pro level, you know, looking at college or high school level guys and formations and schemes and that. And I, even now I can kind of say, hey, wait a minute, that's not the best idea. You know, I'm certainly not an expert, but from my experience of being forced into those meetings, uh, I'm uh, again, I'm kind of glad I did. Um, and, uh, you know, I've got three seniors uh, that just graduated high school that, uh, this year that are uh, going to play college ball next year. So that's uh, three for three this year. I've right. got your guys coming up, but that's my goal is to get these guys ready to go and to compete as freshmen and get a job just like I did. Right. And the and the kickoffs have kind of changed in college and pros, but definitely the definitely the uh the game here comes down here to that to that extra point or to that uh to that game winning field goal. Yeah, so with the new uh PAT rule, well it's not new, but it's fairly new. I mean, still it's a 33 yarder. It used to be a chip shot. Now it's now it can be tricky, especially in Buffalo, Green Bay, Chicago. It's not a gimme anymore. And we've seen a number of times where there's one point left out there. And you know, there's that whole theory that you know it's seven six, but you're still losing. 
So that does add a little uh, dimension to the game that we didn't necessarily have before when we we're literally sitting under the goalpost and, you know, <laughs> putting it through. Uh, and now with the new kickoff rule, that will be interesting. And I, I'm all I'm all for player safety. Absolutely. Um, we've all I've been I've been knocked out. You know, I mean, I've had my bell rung a couple of times out there and I just can't imagine the guys that are out there all the time. College, high school, pros practice camp and then the games it's just the hits to the head that's that's really sad and i played with junior seo in san diego and you know we're, we're becoming unfortunately very aware of cte and, and and what it's what it's the effect that it's had on a lot of my fellow alumni and it's sad so anytime the league can step in to, to help these guys extend their career and stay safe i'm all about it i just think it's going to be interesting because the whole new technique of kicking where you don't want to kick in the end zone anymore right uh, you know they're encouraging returns while being safe so we'll see how it plays out right well hey steve i know with uh <laughs> my brother and sister being tribe alums and having uh coach albert on recently uh appreciate your time for uh coming on and sharing your story there from growing up in canada being a student athlete at william and mary and having your uh your career move on to the NFL. So uh, thanks again for your time and sharing your story. Well, my pleasure. And again, uh, thank you for your service in the U S Navy. I, I appreciate that. Sure. No problem. And uh, fans, that was uh, Steve Christie here uh, on the show today. So uh, thanks again. You're welcome.